Hey, what is up guys? Kevin Cage back with another XRP update. This video is an absolute must see, so I hope you enjoy some of these points in tonight's segment of Rapid Fire News. First off, this is an old document in this infographic from I believe 2016. I'll have to double check, but notice the Volpe Ripple processor module. So they have the company Ripple and of course the XRP ledger integrated here. We have some old verbiage as well, Ripple Connect. This does not apply today. What I want to show you is just one example of one of the world's biggest technology providers, Volante, integrated the company Ripple and of course notice settlement being the key word pre-validating transactions all the things that essentially X current and even Swift GPI today do this has been planned for quite some time and whatever you believe I really don't care just understand Ripple is not just some company all right they are a decacorn so we're gonna speed through some of these points and then we're gonna talk about some relevant news for Volante today as well as Ripple so first things first, we're well aware of Volante, a massive behemoth. Of course, they are actually one of the technology providers for the clearinghouse of the United States talking and their focus is on real time payments. So we can kind of go through here and look at the tech providers right here. So if you go to their website, I believe you can just click RTP and now we see. Volante right here and we know that they send arguably maybe a trillion couple trillion of dollars per day and we'll show that exactly we know Finastra another group that is RippleNet enabled and as I think I referenced a few videos ago Finastra a RippleNet partner guys integrated right there with via a single API has 9,000 customers and includes 48 of the top 50 banks in the world but I'm sure that's just another coincidence all right also so we'll go back to the clearinghouse, wherever it is, if I can find it. And now we have Sovolante, we know Finastra. Um, we've talked about FIS, we've talked about Fiserv, bottom line, CGI, of course, just a massive behemoth. And we've shown like their intelligent gateway. And they have some amazing PDFs that I know Demor Sahami has shared with me and I've done videos on in the past. And then ACI Worldwide. And we're well aware of the $14 trillion per day that they send. Does the XRP ledger have to process all of this? Absolutely not. What I'm saying is they're integrated with some absolute behemoths. Now we can look at the participants as I often do. Of course, in my recent videos, I've been talking about Citi, HSBC, and JP Morgan processing and controlling 80% of all cross-border transfers. Remember, the world sends $155 trillion across borders globally. So yes, there is a huge slice of the pie. There's going to be many technologies fighting for it, but there is one technology that I have my eye on that is doing it better than the rest and at least can check off more boxes than the majority can. So Bank of America, founding member of Ripple, you know, a global payment steering group, aka RippleNet years ago. We have Citi right here, um, HSBC, RippleNet, by the way, MUFG, one of the biggest banks in the world, RippleNet, PNC, one of the first banks to join RippleNet. And just a few examples right there. And then Wells Fargo, we remember Ashish Birla of Ripple, his commentary saying, probably a couple years at this point, saying, you know, we have 50% of India in our pipeline. And once we have that, we're going to go back to Wells Fargo and say there is no cheaper way to send money to and from India than via RippleNet. So very bold statements. I personally think words mean things. I don't want to over speculate, but um, I think this is going to be a lot bigger than many of us even imagine. All right. So quickly on the website for Volante, just understand this is per their website, volantetech.com. Trillions of dollars move through our systems on a daily basis. As I said, a couple trillion at least. For just one of our clients, we process over 800 million transactions a day. And yes, I know I've shown this many, many times on this channel. I just want to reference it because there's a lot more new XRP holders and I want to take it back a bit. Also, you can see this little roadmap, a release of Notch's ISO 222 validator powered by Volante's cloud-based ISO 200 or you know 20022 translation service interesting you guys can see a few of the additional connections and remember Volpe is still you know active and remember Ripple was already you know included with them and we also see that City is involved and we're going to go over that briefly as well and then talked about this speaking of ISO this whole stand you know this whole standards Ripple is now part of the ISO 222 standards body the first member focused on distributed ledger technology interesting so are they just merely another consultant like role with the bank of international you know bank of international settlements the central bank of all central banks and the international monetary fund is it all coincidental and they're just merely you know a steward in the space trying to guide these technologies or do you think there's a chance that xrp may be actually interoperable with some of this technology just like many other cryptos 
I think that. And obviously, with the Global Crypto Council and Brad Garlinghouse and even Danelle Dixon of XLM with Stellar, all of them are involved. I I just think I'd be an idiot to deny the possibility of that. And as I often say, I'm too much of a skeptic to deny the possibility of anything. So I'm just paying attention to this. Yes, I'm holding. Nothing changes my mind. Um, this SEC nonsense will pass eventually. All right. So we talked about this. So pretty eerie that Ripple is one of the first DLT groups focused there. Finastra talked about the real-time payments. The tech providers speak for themselves. I mean, absolute behemoths. Just go look into ACI Worldwide and Earthport and all these other type of multi-currency approaches. It's been in the works for a very, very long time. And also, speaking of Nacha, remember, as I often go over, and we'll talk about that in a minute, remember years ago, 2014, Ripple Labs joins the Nacha Alliance. Keep in mind the payment stack, and I show this a lot on the channel, so apologies, but I just want you guys to screenshot it or just type in Ripple Nacho Alliance. It'll be the first option that pops up. Just paying attention, Bank of America, ACH, it's the entire backbone of the ACH network, arguably. So right here, 1974, 11,000 financial institutions oversee the ACH, the electronic network network that's the backbone of the United States payments. And yes, I know that XRP is aiming at cross-border you know, that use case and the friction first. All I'm saying is there's still an issue domestically speaking in terms of counterparty risk and even like last mile settlements. So I'm not going to rule anything out. Just, you know, making an observation. Would this only be maybe X current and Swift GPI? Yeah, potentially. Maybe they'll find a better way to, you know, settle domestically. But I'm just showing you the company Ripple has some very, very deep roots. And this isn't just something that happened this year. This is, I mean, literally within years of XRP even being created. And XRP is one of the longest living digital assets. So many people count them out time and time again. One of the biggest gainers in 2017, and people often forget that. And now, all these other alts are popping off. People are capitulating, giving up on XRP, and I'm not going anywhere. I didn't come this far to come this far, and I feel like this is just the beginning. All right. So our history, talked about the Ripple module. You guys can find this, to literally just type in this. It should be like the first option if you guys want to continue doing your own research with that. And now I want to make a point that James Rule shared right here. So we talk City, HSBC, and JPM. Well, right here, City extends partnership with Volante for the ISO 222 migration. Interesting. So we know City has some, you know, arguable connections for um, the company Ripple. Are they competitors? To an extent, um, it's, you know, very, very possible. Um, I believe that there's different apps that maybe, you know, competitors, others will try to cooperate. It's a very messy, you know, multi-dimensional war going on in terms of geopolitics, you know, um, correspondent banking, like the power and control of the correspondent banking network. It's There's a lot happening all in all. Okay. And then James Rule even, you know, shared this again. Awesome. So notice simplifies the connection to Ripple's near real-time payment and settlement network. Global, guys. Global settlement network. Keywords. Just like internet of value is not internet of small value. And just like people from Ripple and other organizations say, all the money, not some of it, all the money. The global stock market, 100 trillion. Derivatives, on average, 700 trillion. Real estate, 200 tri trillion plus. Um, that's all the money. Um, you can talk about metals markets. You can talk about so much. Everything will be tokenized. So then you can add that value as well. So, I mean, arguably that's the derivatives market because it derives its value. But, you know, just ranting. So right here, City Extends Partnership. This just came out with Volante for the ISO 222 migration. Volante's payment processing solutions are already an integral part of our payments and transaction banking platforms. I'd assume so. As you guys already said, they're transferring trillions of dollars daily. And remember, I know like last year, we all used to go on that XRP calculator and put in the volume and the dollar amount and calculate XRP's price for, you know, $10, $100 with this type of consistent volume. This is the stuff that gets me excited. All right. And keep in mind, I know some people hate that moon talk and speculating, but as always, you have to speculate in a speculative market. And the most important time to speculate on assets is when price is low and when there's no price action. Very few people make the move. And, you know, we all say we talk big game and say we're going to buy the dip. But when you buy the dip and it keeps dipping and things like that, it's a lot harder than it sounds. But I think it's absolutely going to be worth it, guys. Just please decide for yourselves. And nothing is guaranteed even though I'm showing you a lot of connections and there's so many more and a lot of great people that show amazing connections and um, support for high price in the future, please be accountable, be smart, and do not risk more than you are willing to lose. But for me, 
XRP, just like many people say, is winning the lottery in slow motion. All right. I'm not here for a 10x. I'm here for 100x plus, 1000x plus in a variety of assets. All right. So talking about the complexity, the migrations across many networks or markets operate. And then also I wanted to read a few more points. So Volpe, remember, Ripple enabled is well positioned to support the complexity and the global scope of change that city requires for the ISO adoption and the timelines and it keeps getting delayed and you're wondering what's going on and you know are they all just really that behind with these real-time payment initiatives are there bigger players trying to take over um everybody's looking at china and the BRICS nations there's a lot going on a lot all right and then last but not least i think there's one more point right here moreover by deploying volpe for the iso 222 migration bank treasury teams will be able to offer rich value-added data services to their corporate clients, simplifying reconciliation effort. Again, that is you know, clearing. That has nothing to do with settlements or XRP, so relax. But DLT will absolutely you know, help with this type of, you know, even this straight-through processing. It's going to help do all of that faster, more efficiently, even reduce you know, the cost of labor and all of that, and reduce fraud, most importantly. And yes, guys, um, you know, not to point fingers at anybody, but if you think that there's not fraud in the world of banking and the you know these billion dollar bankers i don't know what to tell you um dlt is going to be great it's going to allow inclusion but it's also going to offer a lot of transparency there's still going to be private private aspects to it um but just understand that fraud is going to be a lot harder to get away with with you know digital paper trails so to speak or digital digital trails i should say and footprints so simply a matter of time a lot of big groups are you know, trying to embrace it. Others may not want to embrace it all the way. JP Morgan with their monopoly of the cross-border payment network and, you know, the correspondent banking network, that's a, a huge portion of their revenue. So they're not going to go quietly, but do I believe that all overall in the world of finance, the playing field will be leveled? Yes, it cannot be stopped at this point. It's not a matter of if, it is just a matter of when, and I'm right there with you. I'm sick of waiting, all right? So, covered that. Also, I wanted to share some commentary from the man, the myth, the legend, Brian Brooks, as he stepped down as acting comptroller of the currency. Came from Coinbase, came in April 2020, and then July, he was essentially allowed banks to custody crypto, made a bunch of, honestly, like very crypto friendly legislation and very big things. And I think he'll be essentially be one of the guys that, you know, goes down in history in this space for making a big big difference and a lot of people are going to go oh no no because you know their asset isn't you know surpassed all-time high yet and props to ethereum by the way but there's just so much more coming guys you cannot look at current price um, investors that you know focus on current price are not successful long term so i'm just going to read a few points here and i want it, you guys to hear his points so he talks about stable coins talks about connecting to banks and this may be dry but i want to show you some very important points and then we'll keep going it's right here. Thanks to everyone who supported me and contributed ideas over the past nine months. Here's where I think we are and where we're going. First, my philosophy. The purpose of government is to set frameworks that allow each of us to safely pursue our own version of happiness. Government should expand freedom, not constrain it. All right. Banks and other corporations are supposed to respond to demand by providing those things people want and are willing to pay for. Exactly. But sometimes institutions decide people's ideas or economic choices are wrong, and then they suppress those ideas or choices. This is why I like him. I like how he just speaks like this. Hence, decentralization, an open internet, an open, keyword open, inclusive, financial system, put power back in the hands of the actual people for whose benefit government and corporations are supposed to exist. They should be serving us. We should not be serving them. Also unbundling. Why is it that only banks and not fintechs, you know, financial technology firms like Ripple or anyone else for that matter, do not or have access to payment rails? Why is it only banks? Because that's a monopoly, guys. This is old, old money. You can just follow it and you understand. Europe has figured this out, but why can't we in the United States? I'm incredibly optimistic that our big, brawling, risk-taking, dynamic country will continue to lead and succeed, but not by protecting powerful incumbents. Yes, success will come from disruptive ideas that are scary today, but expected and even necessary tomorrow. Crypto, scary to some today, but necessary tomorrow as M1 money supply goes to the moon. Yes, DeFi, decentralized finance, scary to some today, but necessary tomorrow as some banks start telling you what you can and can't do with your own money. 
Absolutely. And all like these crackdowns lately and um, limitations that banks and this whole financial system have on us and PayPal, it's going to push us to DeFi. DeFi is already happening. And I just I don't want it to stay CFI, uh, centralized finance. Stable coins, scary to some today, but necessary tomorrow if we want the dollar to remain a competitive global medium of exchange. And again, guys, um, if you have a brand, you understand the dollar, the fiat is not going anywhere. You know, all the fiat nation's currencies should be staying. No problem. That's not what I'm pro pro proposing whatsoever. What I'm saying is there's going to be invisible protocols that govern and program how value and data are shared and sent globally, some of which will be entirely decentralized, some will be centralized, and some will be, you know, in the middle, more so distributed than they are today. There's going to be benefits and trade-offs for everything, whether it's proof of work, proof of stake, proof of consensus, or you know, proof of authority, any other type of consensus mechanisms. It's not one size fits all for any sector. Non-depository banks, scary to some today, but necessary tomorrow if we want the economy to grow and consumers to be protected. Be well, everyone, and don't be strangers. After a short sabbatical, I will be back in touch. Man, I feel like that was a phenomenal speech. I wish he was just on the news and did that instead. All right, so we talked about City. We'll keep an eye on them. JP Morgan talked about HSBC, Volante, the Volpe processor, and the Ripple module. Um, and you guys can find this at theclearinghouse.org. And I believe you can just click RTP, about RTP. Let me do it with you so I make sure. Participants, you can go to the tech providers. And then what I've already done in the past is I go to the funding agents and then take a look at them and then look at these people. And then I kind of go through LinkedIn or whatever is available um, and do some what you guys call dot connecting, all right? And yes, I know some things may be coinc you know, a coincidence, but it's not all coincidental. Finastra, just another group. Ripple, and then also I wanted to share this. So we have, I don't know why he calls him this, calls himself this, dictator, know-it-all, this is Lionel, um, has a background in banking, he's also King Troll on Twitter, very funny guy. Um, overall, if you guys are curious on his background, SMBC, JP Morgan, Bank of New York, um, again, this is a huge Ripple partner. City UBS with the utility settlement token. So he has a you know long resume, very smart guy, um, and he's just, he's pretty funny on Twitter. Anyways, right here, when, Brad Garling, Brad Gar, not Brad, Brad Garlinghouse says XRP would still continue if Ripple the company was gone. Well, let's be honest, XRP has continued since inception without the company Ripple is pretty much or pretty much up until 2018. None of the Ripple clients and users and customers were using XRP, guys. We're talking from 2013 to 2018, five years where they're really, I mean, yes, there were proof of concepts, but there was no adoption or scale. XRP was sub penny half a penny then we saw it to go to nearly four dollars and that was all before ripple even used it in live payment flows so that does not satisfy the how we test whatsoever and consider xrp a security if anything it validates that xrp is a lot more distributed and decentralized and right now the sec is going after ripple because their concern isn't xrp it's the holdings of ripple it's the escrow amount so you know, there's so many things going on here. All in all, I think it's going to pass. Um, I think there's going to be some type of, um, I guess you could say, settlement. And, you know, this whole litigation process is very complex. I'm going to be watching a lot of people and I'm rooting for, you know, Johnny Deaton specifically what he's doing for this space. Really like it and protecting us retail investors as well. All right. Now, I think there's like one or two things I want to share with you left, and they're very good. So, Anders L., I do find it strange that LIBOR, as I pronounce it, is actually based on the USD lending between top banks in London, a system they had for 50 years. Again, things are changing, transfer of wealth, it's time to update certain things and how they get their rates and even just technology as a whole. So just to speed through this, you guys can see this, London, Ripple, R3, they all have offices there, no surprise a standard in the interbank euro dollar market, one of the largest short-term money markets in the world. Now, right here, Patrick Jane. And that's a great show, by the way, Mentalist from years ago. Love that show. Right here. What a weird freaking coincidence. The woman leading the LIBOR transition for four years is now on Ripple's board of directors since December 2020. Interestingly enough, she joined right before the darkest day of the year, December 21st, when the SEC came after Ripple and then XRP had a candle of about 50% down. So yeah, I'm sure Ripple is a scam. And that's sarcasm, guys. Open your eyes, people. It is coming. Nice one. Now... Remember, Sandy O'Connor, right here, recently retired, is the Chief Regulatory Affairs Officer for J.P. Morgan Chase, where she set the firm's comprehensive regulatory strategy and led engagement with G20 regulators, 
Keep in mind, these G20 regulators already considered XRP not a security in policymakers regarding the evolving regulation. So when you invest in an asset, when you invest behind a company or whatever, and obviously I'm investing in an open source digital asset XRP, I'm investing in the builders. So I'm not just investing in base, you know, guessing that Ripple will succeed. I'm essentially investing in the whole ecosystem. And what I want to say is, you know, if you don't believe the company Ripple, um, that's fine. But you have to look at the people that are added and the people that are on the board and the advisors. They are some very powerful people. Right here, Sandy, extremely well respected by her peers on Wall Street. So now they have additional friends on Wall Street. We know that Ripple and many other companies have offices in D.C. for lobbying. Um, this is simply the future. This is happening. And this is just another tiny example right here. 30 years of experience, regulatory affairs. And this was on the 14th, one week before the SEC came after the company Ripple for allegations and you know, kind of what I see is similar to like what EOS and other cryptos have done. And we've seen it time and time again. After there was clarity or anything, cryptos popped 500%, 2000%. Um, I guarantee there's more fear in the way, I mean, in the coming weeks, like without a doubt. Um, and if price goes down, there's going to be bad news that goes with it. And people will say that's why price went down. But all I'm saying is, I think this is going to be a very, very bullish year after this nonsense passes. And I'll, uh, I'll essentially allude more to that as we get there. Uh, but Patreon supporters, you guys know my thoughts. All right. Also, Anders L. So Spark gives us the new generation consensus avalanche, smart contract capabilities to all blockchains, as well as an economic incentive to participate in the network without using proof of stake or proof of work. Yes. Very, very smart. All right, and then last but not least, guys, so Wrath Economy, and just wanted to point this out since we were just on um, the IBS intelligence website related to all of this with City. So very cool right here. The latest paper from ECS Finn in collaboration with IBS intelligence expresses the need for advanced payment hubs and mentions Ripple. And again, back in the day, Ripple was used kind of interchangeably between the company, um, the digital asset, the entire protocol and software. It was very, very um, loose verbiage. So keep that in mind. They mentioned Ripple as a reason alongside central bank digital currency initiatives. Well, the Central Bank of France, why did they name the XRP ledger in the Ethereum blockchain is two options to build and interoperate central bank digital currencies with. And that was what, in February? So things that make you go, hmm, all right? So I want to read through this really quick. So multiple initiatives are running around digital currencies explored by central banks and global banks, as well as distributed ledger technology-based cross-border schemes such as Ripple. Interesting. And then lastly, right here, note too that their diagram of a modern payment hub's topo uh, topo I can't even say it. topography excuse me, lists Ripple, and I think this is pronounced Roxy in the same place. Roxy is a permissioned payment blockchain that partners with ECS Fin which is likely the only reason it is mentioned here. Very good deduction. And also, payment module, Swift GPI, we can see Ripple, Nacha, Bioregion, Interbank Networks, ACH Networks, you know, messaging, but then settlements is the keyword that I'm focusing on. So just pointing a few things out, um, Ripple sure isn't a lot of documents, these are just literally a few. Um, I just encourage you guys to keep doing your own research and looking at all of this carefully. Um, here's the actual document as well. I did retweet it. Notice, you know, we have, you know, uh, blockchain as a service, you have payment as a service, all these new phrases in this future financial system. And remember, I'm paying attention to what the biggest regulatory bodies and other organizations around the world are saying, like the IMF specifically in the World Economic Forum and the BIS. Um, the World Bank has praised XRAPID today on demand liquidity in 2017, um, praising the ideas of innovation. So there is a lot going on, and I encourage you guys to pay attention. Um, you know, I respect all of your decisions, but there is just some big, big things. And please um, do not call us lucky when all of this works out. So hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.